Hello and a very warm welcome. My name is Udo Sendaidukai and in this video I explain some simple MIDI controller setups with Bitwig's own integration and some infos to the Driven by Moz extension. I'll be happy if you give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel, but let's get started. You have bought a MIDI controller that is best class compliant, which means compliant with the general, um, generally applicable standards, something like USB. And practical, it means um, plug-in and can be used completely without uh, special software. Or you want, um, <laughs> or you want, you really, really want to buy a controller and are unsure because there are many controllers that advertise with a special DAH, uh, DA, DAW integration. Um, you see such advertisements for Bitwig quite rarely and you are now a little unsure. The bad news is yes. There are not many controllers offered by manufacturers with Bitwig DAW integration. The good news is that doesn't matter because every MIDI controller in Bitwig is highly configurable and customizable to your needs. This is partly because Bitwig comes with a quite a few integrations out of the box and partly because if you can program, you can write yourself a complete integration using JavaScript or Java. Bitwig has a very comprehensive API, a programming interface with which this is possible. And the absolute icing on the cake is the free driver package, or as Bitwig calls it, the Bitwig extension called Driven by Moss by Jürgen Mossgraber. The extension brings several and very sophisticated controller integrations, such as for the Ableton Push 1 and 2, and for some Arcai, Arturia, Native Instruments, Novation, Gamepads and other controllers. As if this wasn't um, enough, in addition to the MIDI protocol, the Driven by MOS extension also offers integration of the Mackie um, HUI and the MCU protocols, as well as the OSC, the Open, so Open Sound Control protocol. And for those who still can't find their controller, the Driven by MOS extension adds a driver called generic flexi which allows you to add up to 300 functions to a controller by simply clicking together parameters as long as the controller can provide 300 functions you see while others are still evaluating the controllers with the rigid daw integration you can build your own integration with midi meki um, hui or mcu and open sound control so that with a knob of your choice, you can either control the filter of your synthesizer or plugin, move the fader of your mixer up or down, or simply dim lights in the hallway. The info and links to the supported controllers and where, where to get the Driven by MOS extension can be found in the video descriptions. By the way, the Driven by MOS extension is also available to Cocos Reaper. So, but enough for the theory and the background, let's integrate a few controllers. So let's start with the fact that you have plugged your controller into your computer and that is uh, that it is somehow um, displayed by your operating system. The display unknown device does not count. So if you, uh, so um, you have to check again what uh, went wrong. Then you go into the settings of Bitwig into the uh, menu item controllers and find there usually an almost empty page on which only takeover mode and controllers with a bar add controller is available. Takeover mode simply describes how incoming control signals from a controller should affect the knobs of a device or plugin. Simply put, 
If a controller's knob can send values from 0 to 127 and the controller's knob is the controller's knob is currently at 0 but the plugin's knob is at 100 the DAW must react to this difference somehow. This is controlled by the takeover mode. So there are three different modes. Immediate, catch and relative scaling. Immediate is in my example external slider at zero and slider at the plugin uh, of the plugin at 100. When turning the external slider, the slider of the plugin jumps from 100 to zero or to the value um, the external slider is currently at. Catch is the external is that the external slider must first be turned up to 100 so that the internal slider of the plugin then reacts to it and can be changed. Relative scaling, oh sorry, relative scaling in this example is that when the external knob is turned up, the plugin's knob moves underproportionately, so slower. And when you turn the external knob down, the plugin's knob moves disproportionately, so faster. If you wiggle the external knob back and forth all the time, after a short time, both knobs um, would be in sync in their position. When the controller of the plugin moves underproportionately or disproportionately, it simply depends on the initial position of the external and internal controller. Just try that out. Um, so click on the add controller and a three column selection window opens. On the left with the hardware vendor, a drop down list with uh, manufacturer names. If which you click on, for example, let's take Novation here, for example. Um, You get you get all the um, models in the middle of the window, uh, all all supported models in the win in the middle of the window, and on the right there is the add button with which I confirm my selection. My list. Um, once again, my list um, is not the pure product list, which is supported by Bitwig, but also filled with the products which are supported by the Driven by Moss extension. So on the far right of uh, the bar, there's an X which I can use to cancel the process or delete a driver from a, from a definition what I did already some seconds ago. By default, the view starts on the left with the hardware vendor generic. And under products, there are controller, flexi, gamepad, keyboard, blah, 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 MIDI keyboard. These are universal scripts or drivers, drivers <laughs> with which a general control of MIDI controllers is possible. If you have a MIDI keyboard with a few knobs or sliders and maybe a transport field, something like play, stop, record, then I can use the controller script controller as a starting point, this one. Of course, this also works for controllers that are not a keyboard and only consist of knobs and sliders. If I just have a MIDI keyboard without sliders, then the script MIDI keyboard is exactly the right thing for me. The script keyboard plus eight knobs, CC2227, is a special script that assumes that these knobs have exactly the numbers CC20 to CC27 and send values with them. If this is not written in your controller manual, then do not use the script. But back to the controller. Um, I add that, okay. So I get the bar that says generic controller. Generic indicates which manufacturer it is, if it would be a specific one. 
And controller is the name of the script. With um, double click, you can edit or enhance it. I usually um, leave it as it is and then enhance it with the controller name, for example. Oops. So I always know which controller is controlled by which script. So right in the bar, there's again the X, the X, um, which I can delete the script again and, and uh, left it in the bar. And left in the bar is an on or off button with which I can activate uh, or deactivate the script. If in the lower right part of the bar, a MIDI in was selected. As soon as this is done, the complete configuration opens. But before I continue here, I want to check the two icons on the left side opposite of the MIDI input. The gear on the left opens and closes the configuration page. The bubble next to it activates or deactivates informative messages in the DAW there, uh, that are triggered by the controller. Mm, it is recommended to leave this um, option enabled. So I have now connected a uh, Quark Nano Control 2 controller here, which um, has its own driver or integration from Bitwig. But um, it is good to use it for demonstration purposes because of its eight knobs and or sliders and the transport field. So the settings page of the controller script has three sections on, um, on top of each other. Remote controls, cursor track, transport. On the left side and on the right side, each with a learn button titled column with usually several lines. I now click on the learn button and start to turn each knob from the left to the right side. A message appears, move remote one, and every time a knob could be assigned, another message comes up to turn the next knob. Move remote one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then learning complete. The field now contains MIDI CC numbers of the knobs. If you made a mistake, you can simply click on learn again and repeat the process. You can also click on the whole, on the white, white field and move the mouse uh, to change the value or enter value directly with control click. If you enter the value of minus one, then this controller is disabled or simply not defined. I can now do the same with a cursor track And the transport, so play, stop, record, cycle. And my controller is now ready for use. For example, over here, if I press play, record, then stop, and the cycle over here, and my knobs are now assigned to the remote pages over here. And if I wiggle them around, you see they are all turning over here. And the volume slider over here is assigned to this one. So I go back to the controllers um, settings, settings, controllers, and delete this script once again. So, and I now use the Bitwig uh, Quark Nano Control integration and select my Nano Control. And now it looks a little bit different because on the left side, a few icons have been added and the gear for setting is now oranged out. All functions are predefined and cannot be changed. For programmers, it is interesting fact that the script of this is a JavaScript and is delivered in the source code with Bitwig. So you can do it yourself if you can. After the bubble, 
a rectangle with triangles in all four directions follows. If this is activated, Bitwig follows the navigation which is controlled from the controller. For example, if a track is changed, Bitwig will also show the track change. After the rectangle, there is a question mark with a white circle. If you click on it, a um, browser opens with a small um, manual how to use this controller with a script. So this is the Quark Nano control and these are all the definition and uh, explanations. To the right side of the question mark, there is a vertical space needle from Seattle, I don't know, with, with which you can activate or deactivate if the, take, uh, if the takeover mode should be used or a function that your controller may provide. So I delete this again. And then, of course, there is um, the option of using the generic flexi script from the driven by MOS extension. But that's an exciting story with a rampant ex um, excesses that will um, want to be told in another story. And um, if you look at these <laughs> example. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. My name is still Odo Sendai And if you have any questions or comments about this topic or any other topic, please let me know and leave a comment. If you find the video helpful, like, subscribe and share it with your friends or with people who love um, updos. It might be helpful to them as well. I hope to see you soon again in the next video. Stay healthy, save the future, take care. See you then. Ciao, ciao.